Life on the Edge, an unveiling of the mysteries of life in the poles. Hi Diane, how are you today? Hello Cedric, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm good, thank you. I recently watched a documentary on life in the polar regions. Would you be interested in discussing it? Oh, that sounds fascinating, Cedric. I'd love to know more. Which polar region was the documentary about? It was about both the Arctic and the Antarctic. Despite the harsh conditions, life thrives in both places. That's intriguing. What sort of creatures live there? Well, in the Arctic, you can find animals like polar bears, Arctic foxes, walruses, and various types of seals. The Antarctic, on the other hand, is home to creatures like penguins and seals. It must be challenging for these creatures to survive in such cold and extreme environments. Absolutely, but these animals have adapted in amazing ways. For example, polar bears have a layer of fat under their skin that keeps them warm. Penguins huddle together to share warmth. Nature is truly remarkable. What about human life? Do people live in these regions? Yes, people do live in the Arctic region. The indigenous communities, such as the Inuit, have been living there for thousands of years. But in the Antarctic, permanent human settlement is not allowed, although scientists do live there for short periods to conduct research. That's interesting. What do people do for a living in such harsh conditions? The traditional activities include hunting, fishing, and herding reindeer. But nowadays, many also have jobs in tourism, administration, and other modern industries. It's hard to imagine living under such conditions. It must require a great deal of resilience. Indeed, it does. But despite the challenges, these regions have a unique beauty and a rich ecosystem that its inhabitants deeply cherish. Thank you for sharing this, Cedric. It has certainly piqued my interest in polar regions. I'll try to watch that documentary too. You're welcome, Diane. I'm sure you'll find it as fascinating as I did. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Thank you, Cedric. I will. Have a great day. Living on the Edge, a chat with Charles and Linda on life near Mount Vesuvius. Hi Linda. How's your day going? Hello Charles, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm good, thanks. I was just reading about Mount Vesuvius in Italy. It's fascinating how people live so close to an active volcano. It certainly is, Charles. Living near an active volcano like Mount Vesuvius can be an interesting experience. What aspect are you curious about? Well, firstly, isn't it dangerous to live so close to an active volcano? It can be, Charles. Mount Vesuvius is one of the most closely monitored volcanoes in the world due to its history and proximity to populated areas. But it's important to remember that most of the time, the volcano is dormant. That's comforting, but it did cause one of the most deadly eruptions in history, right? Yes, that's correct. The eruption in 79 AD completely destroyed the cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum. It's a grim reminder of the power of nature. Absolutely. So why do people choose to live so close to such a potentially dangerous place? There are many reasons, Charles. For one, the volcanic soil is incredibly fertile, which is great for agriculture. The region is also culturally and historically rich, and many families have lived there for generations. I see. So, the benefits outweigh the risks for most people? In many cases, yes. But it's also crucial that residents are prepared for any potential eruption. The Italian government and scientific community work together to monitor the volcano and keep the population informed and prepared. That makes sense. Living near Mount Vesuvius must be quite a unique experience. Indeed, Charles. Despite the potential danger, it's a remarkable place with a rich history and vibrant culture. Thanks for the insights, Linda. I always enjoy our informative chats. I'm glad to hear that, Charles. 
I look forward to our next conversation. Take care. You too, Linda. Until next time. Bundle of Joy, Joseph and Jennifer discuss their sister's baby. Hi Jennifer, how are you today? Hello Joseph, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm doing well. Did you hear the news about our sister's baby? Yes, I did. She's having a girl, isn't she? Yes, indeed. It's really exciting. I can't wait to become an uncle. How about you? I feel the same way. I'm really looking forward to becoming an aunt. It's such a joyous occasion. It sure is. What do you think about the name our sister has chosen for the baby? I think Emily is a lovely name. It's classic and elegant. What do you think? I couldn't agree more. Emily is a great choice. I'm sure she will be just as lovely as her name. Absolutely. I can't wait to see her. I've already started shopping for baby clothes and toys. That sounds like fun. I've been reading books on how to be a great uncle. That's really sweet of you, Joseph. I'm sure you'll be a wonderful uncle. I hope so, Jennifer. And I know you'll be an amazing aunt too. Thank you, Joseph. I'm really looking forward to it. We should plan a visit to our sister soon. That's a great idea, Jennifer. Let's arrange a date and time later today. Sure, Joseph. Let's do that. Have a great day. Hi everyone, hope you're having a great day, let's get started. I drink coffee in the mornings. She is brushing her teeth. She is playing a guitar. David is reading a book. She is jogging. She likes jogging. She likes jogging. Emma is flipping a coin. Sometimes, flipping a coin is a good way to settle a dispute. Emma is taking a selfie. Emma is taking a selfie. She has 2,000 followers on Instagram. David likes taking photos. He is a professional photographer. Emma is washing her hands. David is at the office today. David is at the office today. He is very busy. He is very busy. He has a lot of work to do. He has a lot of work to do. Emma is answering a call. Emma is answering a call. Emma loves to go shopping. 
She bought new clothes for herself. We are reading the menu. She is tired. She is sleeping. I'm going to sleep too. Good night.